Hello, everybody, and welcome to Knights of the Pageless Library. This is a podcast where we review audiobooks. I am Bo Knight. And I am Ryan Knight. And today we are taking a look at Occultation and Other Stories by Laird Barron and narrated by David Drummond. That's right. We, uh, we should mention real quick, we got our first piece, our first real email. Yeah, I'm kind today, of riding that high right now. <laughs> um. So I guess we need to thank Brian for uh, his kind email he sent us. It wasn't hate mail, but yeah. it, was, uh, it was a nice email he wrote I feel us. like that's the next logical step, right? we got to make somebody hey, angry could... enough to want to say something. <laughs> well, that's not that hard to do these days if we really wanted to. Um, but yeah, so thank you, Brian, for reaching out to us. Um, and we will get that, uh, we'll get that library card in the mail for you there. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we really appreciate it. And if uh, if anybody else would like to email us, kotpl.pod at gmail.com is the easiest place to reach us. Uh, we're on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. Um, we're over on Spotify, which is where Brian says he found us. So that's great to hear. Um, we should yeah. be on most things that you can get podcasts from. Pretty much. I think anywhere you can get, uh, although we did turn down uh, Amazon music podcasting yeah but i i don't know if i want to talk about that that was weird that's fine no we don't have to talk about it i'm just saying you might not be able to find us on there because i don't know if they just pull rss feeds like uh, you know like podcast addict or whatever i'm not sure how it works i yeah, mean neither um so yeah let's talk about occultation and so, the other this, stories and other stories that's important <clears throat> Uh, so this book, the book itself was written in 2010. Uh, I believe it was published by Audible in 2014. Uh, yeah, the audiobook was. <clears throat> and Laird Barron, uh, I think this is kind of his bread and butter, is writing kind of short story anthologies. It looks like he has several of those under his belt. Um, but from what I can see, I had never heard of him before we listened to this. Um, Me neither. But he has a lot of – he actually has quite a few books over on Audible. He has quite the selection over there. So if anybody wants to check that stuff out, he has quite a, quite a few things you could listen to. And you can only get this occultation and other stories that we listen to from Audible. I don't think you can get it anywhere else. Right. Yes, it is, it is only from Audible. Yeah. <clears throat> and – so what did you think about David Drummond's performance, if you will, during this? I think it's very good. I also thought it was very good. I thought he did a great job. I He didn't really have to. I mean, he did a lot of wide array of characters. Um, well, there's, there's a wide array of, of characters, too. And there are little tiny like audio things that happen. I don't know if you noticed. But, like, there's a part when someone's on the phone and they talk back to him and it sounds different for, like, literally three words. I thought that was really cool. Right. Yeah, I, I agree. I think there was a lot of attention to detail put into that stuff. And when he does need to change characters, because there's a lot of characters over the total of the stories, which I believe there's ten total stories in this kind of anthology. There's nine. Nine stories in the anthology. Um. But within each individual story, some of them might only have one or two characters. But he still does a great job of making each character in the entire book, to me, um, be very individualized, which I thought was great. Yeah, he does a fantastic job because this is all short stories. And But he, I don't know, he like sets the tone for each character like right away, which sure. I, I, I thought was really well done. Yeah, I thought he did a, I thought he did a really good job, actually. Um, so the overall kind of theme of all of this is uh, anthologies and short stories, and these are very much so sort of uh, fiction, horror-type stories. So I thought this was based on true events. <laughs> I hope not. 
Me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, and this one, this one's pretty long. So it's about 12 and a half hours. Uh, but like I said, that's broken up over nine stories. So. Yeah, and some of them are really short and some of them are pretty long. Right, exactly. Yeah, I want to say, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I want to say like a couple are maybe only an hour long. And then there's a couple that are like, I think the last one is the last one is like 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. It did seem very short, but yeah, then there's also a couple in there that are what two or three hours by themselves. So so there's kind of a good variety between like, just like a standard short story and then like kind of like a little bit of a longer story kind of mixed in here. So you could buy this one. Uh, You could get it for free with your uh, audible trial, if you will, or you could purchase this one for $25 on audible. Which, you're getting a lot of um, content here, to be honest. Yeah, you really so are. I actually don't think that $25 is like an unfair price for this book. You could probably get it on sale, which I think is why I ended up picking it up, because it was on like super sale for only a few dollars, you know? So, uh, if you guys end up finding our podcast interesting about it or whatever, or you get interested in this book... What I often do on Audible is go ahead and, if you find anything you like, add it to your wish list, and then Audible will notify you anytime that stuff goes on sale. Yeah, that's definitely a good idea. So, oh, <laughs> all right, the big question. Is this easy to follow? No, but <laughs> but hang on. But I don't feel like that's a bad thing. Okay, all right. I could agree with that. I do not think this is easy to follow at all. Um, I found myself several times doing other things, like working out in my shop and stuff while listening to this. And I would finish, I don't know, measuring and cutting a board. And then I would be like, wait a second, what's happening now? What, what's going on? So Well, and I think a lot of that has to do with just the writing style. Sure. And and there are a lot of words that I'm like, I don't even know what that means, like, at all. That's, that that yeah, happened to me a point. lot, but I, I don't think that's to the book's detriment. I think it's actually a strength. Sure. I agree. Um, it, yeah, I, and it was, it was hard to follow, but I did find myself pretty engaged with each story, if that makes sense. Like, I would say this is easy listening, but not oh, it, necessarily it down easy to follow. Super smooth. Sure. But it is, it's very dense. It, exactly. And that's exactly the word I would use to describe it, too, is that it is dense. Uh, um, so yeah, before I'm, we pass the spoiler hard wall, to not, Yeah, that's okay, good. Let's let's go ahead and uh, let's put our recommendations out there for anybody curious. So, what, what do you think? I really really like this book. Oh wow! I'm glad because I kind of picked this one just out of the blue, mostly because it mentions H.P. Lovecraft in the uh, description of it. So I, and for anybody who's listened to us knows we're big fans of that. So I thought let's give this a shot, and uh, that's good to hear that you really liked it. I also. I really liked it too, and I found it pretty interesting, for sure. I think each individual story is very strong on their own, and I don't think there are any of them that are like wasteful and don't belong. Sure. I would agree with that. Um, I would, though, rec- I would probably only recommend this, though, to people who are fans of uh, horror or those kind of things, because they're, there's some pretty graphic parts oh, in this book dude there are so many times i was like oh gross like out yeah. loud sure and, and that's, that's what that's i mean too so strong I... imagery to make a like a book to gross me out exactly and that's it's even i think it's even more to the book's uh credit that it's in audiobook form somebody reading it to you can still give you those sort of images so yeah it's it's really well written like the whole thing. I so to me, and this I I'm not trying to even like throw shade at like Laird Baron because I thought this was a great book too. But as I've told you a few times, you know, I've started dabbling in like writing stories of my own. 
And uh, I kind of, I actually surprisingly catch myself kind of writing like him or wanting to write like he does, kind of uh, switching perspectives and switching back and forth between locations like quickly. And I, at first I thought I was like, man, I must be doing something wrong because I go back and read my stuff and I was like, there's no way this mood makes sense. And then I listened to this book and I was like, well, he, he does that a lot, but very, very elegantly. So I guess that's that's the key I need to take away from this one. <laughs> yeah, and I think elegantly is a good way to put this. I I I think like the short story format I think is is probably a strength of his probably because sure. he it seems like right when they like in each story it's like right when your intrigue is peaking the story's over. Right. And <clears throat> yeah, and, and not every time way. it's like every time I'm almost like whoa like at the end of all of them I'm always like whoa. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, so there you go. <clears throat> there is our, uh, you pretty much got all thumbs up from us here on this one, which so far has been kind of rare on our podcast, actually. <laughs> I mean, it's um, not necessarily at, true. At least, that, and that's not even what I mean. I mean for something that we both just listened to for the first time. This is not something that we had both previously listened to and then decided yeah, to do a podcast you're, about it. Right, we didn't like curate this one. We're both like, no. yeah, we know this is pretty good. <laughs> like, yeah, it's true. Right, yeah, I mean, because that's pretty much what we did towards the beginning of this podcast. I mean, people probably noticed that trend. And then a lot of stuff we were both kind of picking at random to do, we found ourselves not liking them as much. So I, that's good to see that we both ended up liking this one a lot. Yeah. Um. So with that, we'll go ahead and pass the spoiler wall. So we'll just talk about the story um, a little bit. So for anybody who doesn't, what we have to say about it. Yeah. How do you want to do this? Um, I wasn't <clears throat> planning on going into, because <sighs> to be honest, I, I listened to like the first three quarters of the book quite a while ago, and then I just finished it up a few days ago. So my memory on the entire book might be a little bit off, um, but we can kind of just just kind of hit on each story just a little bit, and then I wanted to just kind of maybe throw out which which short story was like your favorite. Okay, I don't know if I remember the names of all of them. Uh, lucky for you, I have them pulled up. So <laughs> okay, can we go in order? Yeah. So the first story is called "The Forest." Um, and this one opens This is the up. one I think I like the least. You what? I think this is the one I like the least. I agree. And I think I think though, that being said, if I went back and I listened to the first one again, I would probably like it more because I understand the tone of the book now. When Yeah, and I I cuz like at the end of this one I was like, "Wait, what happened?" Exactly. And that's exactly what happened to me because I didn't know the tone of the book at all. Yeah, um, yeah, and it, this, yeah. This one does set the tone pretty quickly. Um, this one is basically about uh, the cinematographer goes and he meets up with that gal, right, that he had worked with when he was younger, but she's part of like a, a team of people, like scientists that are out in the middle of the woods. Right. Um, but they, at first you're like, eh, this is kind of boring. Like he's just going out there and she's like, you know, working with bugs or whatever they're doing. But then you really quickly find out, no, this is like, they're setting up for like a cult sacrifice, literally to be given visions of the future of the world, basically. Yeah. <laughs> like it's some, some crazy stuff that happens. Yeah, yeah, and then like I almost yeah, I I like didn't really even understand what was happening for most of it. I didn't understand what was happening for most of it either. And at first, it really it kind of made me nervous because I was like, man, if this one's this hard to follow, how I don't know how I'm gonna listen to the rest of the book. But luckily, they I think they get a little bit easier from this one forward for the most part. Yeah, and I mean I think there are there are the next one's kind of straightforward. Yeah, so the next one is actually called uh, Occultation, and this one basically just takes place um, 
third person of a couple that are in like a rundown motel room uh and they're basically partying the two just the two of them taking drugs drinking having sex basically yeah um but but when it's the gal right she notices the stain first well they had just like watched a scary movie so they're both kind of like spooked and she yeah she notices like a spot on the wall and it moves well and they they both they both start telling each other scary stories right from things that they'd experienced yeah that's right and Um, she and she like likes to be afraid Right, yeah, because he tries to tell her like the scariest story he can, which is the about the guy who sees the gal take her own head off or whatever and hold it under his shoulder. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, so before we forget, so because this has the name occultation in it, you have the description of oh yeah of, of what occultation means, right? Yeah. So an occultation is an event that occurs when an object is hidden by another object passing between it and its observer. It's it's often like a, an astronomy term, I guess. Like that's what uh like uh, eclipse is. It's an occultation oh, okay, event. Oh, sure. Okay. But I think they're using it here as like like some something is obstructing your vision, so you're not noticing what's going on behind, like what's actually going on. And I feel like that's kind of a theme throughout the whole the whole all of the books. Sure. Yeah, and in this one, it's very prevalent because the two of them, you know, this could be taken to mean uh, the the drugs, the the alcohol, each other. They are are what is obscuring their vision of what's actually like transpiring around them, and it all starts with the stain on the wall. Yeah. Because doesn't she go outside at one point too, and she finds out that like outside the room outside of the hotel has turned into like some crazy freaking fantasy world. Like there's like a tortoise out there, the size of a car. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But she thinks she's like, it's just cause she's on drugs. Right. But then doesn't she end up going back in the room and <sighs> I can't remember now is the guy she was with gone. No, he's there, but he's like his head is his, his head is in his hands and he's crying. That's right. And then somebody under the bed starts laughing. Well, he, the guy, like, the guy, like, he's like, yeah, that stain on the wall wasn't a stain. It was a worm and it crawled up my ass. That's right. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Yeah, this one, this one. So for how much the first one confused me, this one set the tone of me being like, dang, this book's pretty creepy. It's like, super creepy because it's and then like yeah and then the last sentence of that story is and like a, a, some like a voice from under the bed starts laughing and you're like wait what the fuck because yeah, they mentioned and, in the book too they're like they're like is someone underneath the bed yeah yeah and then and then it's over yeah and it's like I I'm it's not like, I I don't really understand what happened but cool <laughs> yeah I like that one quite a bit so the next one what's it called. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know if I can pronounce this. The Lagerstada? Yeah, I think that's right. You think that's right? That looks right to me. Somebody please email us and correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> so this one is like about a woman who lost her husband and son in like a plane crash. But you don't like, you kind of learn it like it, it bits and pieces as she's like talking to her therapist about like how her life is going. And then and- like as she's talking to the therapist it's like actually showing us what actually transpired right and this one to me was very jarring with how it jumps back and forth between present and uh it's it's super confusing but her memories i don't know i i feel like it kind of lends to the story because she's not in the right mind anyway so like the story itself is kind of it's sporadic and crazy sure I, yeah, I don't know. That's that's. I, I feel I don't. This one's probably my favorite. I think. Really? Okay. This one to me was probably, like I said, I think I was uh, doing other things at the time, and so the jarring, like it jumping back and forth between her memories and current time, was very difficult for me to follow. Yeah, it is kind of confusing. I'm not. I'm not even really a hundred percent sure what happens. But basically, she, like, explains to her therapist that, like, she was in the suicide group. One of the girls, some people thought she killed herself, but 
they like found her blood stain. It was like a, it was like a gooey imprint of a person. Mm, and, mm-hmm. and she had talked to her before. And like, what, what's the thing called? I can't remember. It's, it's like this German talisman thing that if you use it like on yourself, like using your blood, you can supposedly like reunite with your lost loved ones. And so she tries it herself and it doesn't work, but she like starts to see her husband more often. Yeah, it, it, like right. She's like places. seeing his. She sees his face like on most, like on a lot of other men, right? I I don't know. I don't know. I don't think she's actually. I think she's actually seeing him. Is the way I interpreted that. Oh, okay. Not not like not like you know like where you see somebody else's face like it's mistaken thing. I don't. I don't. I feel like it was. He's actually there. Okay. That's how I understood it anyway. Yeah. Oh, and you could be right. Like I said, this one was. This one was a little hard for me to follow, and it's a little hard for me to remember. But now that now that you're saying this stuff, it's kind of coming back to me. And I, I she like explains it a couple more to like we kind of like learn that she kept she's tried it a couple times, and she can't get rid of. It's like a it's like a stone, t- talon looking thing. It has yeah. significance, but I can't remember. It's some like German ritual to, like, speak with your loved ones. It's like some witchcraft stuff. Right, and, but she she can't get rid of this thing. Like it keeps showing up. Like her roommate will get rid of it, and then she keeps trying to like to contact her husband, and it doesn't work. And then I can't I can't remember something. Something happens, and it it gets kind of fuzzy. But I like from what I interpret, it happened. Like her, she gets k- killed and tr- transported to where her husband is. I guess, but she doesn't like kill herself. See, I thought she did kill herself. That was my. I thought she did. I don't, but I, I don't. Maybe, maybe that's how. Maybe that's what's happening. <laughs> yeah, we're doing a great job relaying this, but seriously, like, it, we're not. We're not doing the story justice, though. It's just, it is very interesting story, but maybe that's and, the hard and I would part. I really is, like is to is listen to all of this again because I could be like, oh, okay, that's what happened. You know, I and I thought about doing that because. Yeah, when I was driving back from Wyoming last night, I thought about just listening, just binging this whole thing again because I thought, you know, the second time through, these are going to make way more sense to me. Yeah, and yeah, so we're we're I'm doing an awful job of explaining it, and I'm sure some, <laughs> somebody's already like, um, actually, she got taken to Valhalla, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Please you even do notice the Viking Please. imagery in the fucking cafe. <laughs> it's like okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Please do. Please write us an email about that. We'd love yeah, to. <laughs> I would love to. Uh, so you want to move on to the next one? Yeah. What's the next one called? So the next one is called Mysterium Tremendum. Oh, I don't remember this one. So this is the... Um, oh, let's see. This is where the two people are in the Pacific Northwest. Oh, in the woods. actually, okay. The... Is this the two gay guys? Uh, I think so. Where they, where he like finds the book? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. The, the Actually, Moderer this one's my favorite. De Calignit. Oh, okay. So this is my favorite one too. <laughs> That's funny because this, I think this is my favorite one too. Yeah, because it's the, it's the, <clears throat> the two guys, and then they end up meeting up with their other friend, right? And right. they end up. But he has that book. He has like that. Uh, I, it's like a. I can't remember what it is. It's like almost like a guidebook, but it's like an occult guidebook, like how to find the ritualistic type of things around the Pacific Northwest. Yes, but like I, that's not even really explained to you in the beginning. It's like they're going on vacation, and it's like okay, and then then we kind of get like the stories about their friend from the past named Tommy. And then, like they get, they talk about the book a little bit, but like they they tell you all about this trip. But like from the beginning, I didn't really understand. It was like, oh, they're going on this trip to this place that's in the book. But the, right. his friend, his friend Tommy shows up, like in the nighttime to talk to one of the guys, and he's like, I know you've been reading that book. I know you've been doing some of that stuff. Like it's not going to have the effect that you think it's going to. Right. And this guy. The guy who Tommy shows up to, though, didn't really know Tommy, right? Yeah, the he, other, didn't, he didn't know his, Tommy at all. Right, because like his boyfriend or whatever, his boyfriend and the other guy that they've been hanging out with 
or the other two guys? Is there four of them total? There is, right? Yeah, there's four of them. And he, he was not in their group of friends. Right. But Tommy, yeah, because those the other three guys knew Tommy really well. And the the character who we're following, and I cannot remember his name, but he didn't know Tommy. Um, but because Tommy comes and visits him and like is telling him some well, Tommy's dead. We know that. But yeah. Well, well, but that's what I mean by saying uh, that Tommy visits him. I don't mean like he physically. Yeah, t- Tommy didn't like him. come up and knock on the door. It, it's like a exactly. It's like a he really visits him weird, like in the middle of the night. Yeah, like in the middle of the night, and he thinks he's dreaming, but like he he ends up like accidentally mentioning things about Tommy that there's no way he would have known to his husband. Right, and that is where you start to get this like weird vibe from the other three characters because they kind of like they kind of all look at each other so now we as the listener we don't know what happened to tommy and they ended up explaining he died in a water skiing accident exactly and that's how they explain it to the main character is they explain that he uh yeah he was killed in a water skiing accident well we come to find out that that's clearly not what happened (laughs) Um, so are there they're kind of I, I get the vibe that the, the main character didn't know that they were going to this specific site. Is is that what's going on? I I don't actually fully know if I comprehended how they got to that site. I know well, they, they said they were the going to look at certain sites. But they, cause they found it in the book. Is that what it was? They found yeah. it in that, that uh, like, yeah, travel guide that he had? Yeah, but... I, I get the vibe that he didn't know that they were going there. Yeah, that that could be. Yeah, so anyway, I guess they 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 end up like some weird more weird stuff keeps happening, but like they get in a fight and then they, they like go into the woods and they go to this site and like this part's kinda confusing. I really don't understand like if the site is like an actual building or what. I didn't really understand it either. It sounded like it was like some ruins. It yeah. is what I kind of was picturing when I was listening to it. And some like weird entity shows up, right? And it like takes a chunk out of one of the guys. Yeah. And then like then they all like pass out and then they like wake back up. And one of their friends is like he's like ranting and raving like crazy. He's like he he's like, like he says a bunch of stuff that's like he's like, you know, like I know the truth now. There's no going back, blah blah blah. You know, right. real, real classic cult stuff. Yeah. And then they see like a really weird but, figure, right? That doesn't look necessarily human, but not like not human, if that makes sense. Yeah. You're yeah. I, 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 know, I, I know I know what you mean. Else, I don't know <laughs> how else to describe it. Right. Um Yeah, this one is very oh. like HP Lovecraft for sure. Oh, and I ate it up. I was this is so good. Yeah. This one is so good. And they end up they end up leaving, right? Because they got to go back to town because they they need to take this guy who's like out of his mind, right? They're like, we need to get him to the hospital because he's yeah. also the one who got attacked. Yeah. Um, which we should mention was from like a it was like some what like a tentacle, right? Comes out of like the water and attacks him. Um, so they end up going back to town, and is this where we find out what happened to Tommy? They end up he, telling the story. Yeah, he tells he tells the truth about like that Tommy was like in he was doing some real black magic shit, and they all actually were, but Tommy yeah, was like the all into it. of it. And right. when they were in the woods, like a hand just reached out of the ground and grabbed Tommy, right, and pulled him into like a pit, like a black pit. Yeah. <clears throat> so. That's why when the main character was telling them that he had, you know, that Tommy came and like visited him and and stuff, that's why they were all like, oh, my God, this is so messed up. Like, because they they all saw Tommy disappear, but they just assumed he they told the cops, right, that he fell into the hole. Yeah, he fell in a sinkhole. Yeah. But in reality, yeah, like a hand came out and grabbed him and pulled him in. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, then it, there's I don't understand this part with Rosa 
at all. Yeah, I didn't understand this either. Okay, I'm glad I wasn't the only one. Like, I don't understand where she came from. Well, she was the one, right, who, because he was reaching out on the internet trying to find someone who, anyone who knew anything about this book, right? I, she yeah. was the first one, she was the first one to, like, reach out to him, I thought. I, I guess? <laughs> Either way, yeah, some she shows up, right? And um well, she shows up and she's naked in the kitchen, I think. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And and his husband, which I can't remember his name, is like enthralled, right? Like he can't even mm-hmm. react. Yep. And and she she says something she's like you were never really a part of this, but like one day we'll come back for you. You can come with us now, but like one day we'll come for you. Right? And and then like from there it cuts forward in time, back to our main character and he's like living in an entirely different place with an entirely different husband, an entirely different life, and he's like sitting watching the cellar door, which because that's where Tommy came from before, right? Like, and that's he he's sitting and just watching the cellar door every night with a shotgun, and that's where the story ends. Right, but isn't that also where uh, Rosa took his husband? Oh, that's right. Uh, he did. They went down in the cellar. Yeah. Yep, they went down into the cellar, so he knows that something's going to happen from his cellar, basically. Yeah, and that one is real good. Yeah, I, that, I think that was my favorite, too, out of all the stories. But like um, I said earlier, I don't think any of them are bad. There, There's not like no. one I'm like, eh, I think they're all pretty good. For sure. Um, So moving on to story number five. This one's called Catch Hell. Oh, what's this one? Oof. Uh, um, let me see if I can remember it. Oh man, I'm having a hard time remembering exactly what happened. Is this the one where the guy goes, uh, where they're at the, uh, they're at the mansion, the guy and his wife. No, are that's at the, the mansion. Last one. No, 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 no. Uh, you're right. You're right. That's the last one. But I'm thinking the guy. The guy is there because he wants to illegally go try to dig up uh, artifacts. Is that this one? I thought that one was like the third to last one. Is it? I think so. (sighs) See, I'm having a hard time now remembering if this is the one. Man. Because the one you're talking about is like where I I think if we're talking about. No, 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 no. This is the one, right? I think this is the one. Um, he's trying to find an artifact because she can't get pregnant, right? Oh yeah. But okay. But then she ends up having like the freaking the devil's baby. I, that's I I okay. Yeah okay is, yeah. Let's. Is, I don't want to go super deep into this one, but I, I thought I she copied him. Copied her husband. Yeah, because she says he. Uh, the the very last line of the story is he he already looks like his driver's license. Yes. Yeah. That is this one though. Yeah. So, but that's, that's the one I'm thinking, right? Because they end up going to the, um, they end up going to like some resort and her husband's out there digging up, uh, artifacts basically because he, he wants to try because they ended up what they had a kid and they lost it or, or she she had a miscarriage or something. Oh, she killed it. She killed it. Oh, Okay. It, I, I, I want, they don't ever actually come out and exactly say it, but what from I understood happened is like she, she, I think she like threw it off a bridge on, 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 yeah. on accident with quotes, with quotes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she killed it because like, doesn't her mom like when she's talking to her mom, her mom's like, "Are you still a bitch that kills her own puppies?" Yes. Yeah, you're right. And and she won't, she can't get pregnant again for some reason. They like don't understand why. Yeah, and then so isn't that kind of what he is doing? Is he is trying to basically the way I understood it is he's trying to like do some, you know, occult magic type stuff to uh have another child. And he'd been trying like we've learned throughout the story, right? He's been doing shit to her for a long time that she didn't even know about. Yeah, yeah. So like when they show up at the place, right? The first thing he does is like draw a pentagram on the floor around the bed and then a, a matching one on the ceiling, yeah. right? To keep the stuff out. But now that you mention that, she 
comes back to bed the one night and she scratches out the one on the floor to break the circle, like right. to break the seal. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I'm gonna have to listen to these again if I'm yeah, honest. Yeah, I know. Me, me too, because I'm like, I'm like, I don't even remember the breaking the <laughs> circle part. Well, they'll. I think they'll make way more sense the next time around. Um, yeah, because this one was pretty dense and pretty hard to follow. But I do remember there were several times in this where certain things happened, and I was like, oh, "What?" Yeah. Yeah, because doesn't like the devil literally or some demon shows up? She summons some demon and has sex with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. That is the one. Okay, I'm glad I. I'm glad I remembered that. It that that is the story. Okay. Um, Moving on. Yeah, let's not. Yeah, let's move on because otherwise we're just going to end up butchering it even worse than we already did. <laughs> I, yeah, um, um, I'm sorry, but go listen to it. Like, why are you listening to me talk about it? Like, yeah, seriously, want? though. Yeah, I definitely would I would highly recommend this one. Um, okay, so number six is called uh, Strapado. Uh, um, and I'm, is this I'm the trying other one to about remember. the two gay guys? Where they like are they like are on vacation and they get like captured? Yes, this is the yes. This is the one I Where think I go... understood the least. Same here. Okay, so yeah, because they end up going to what some like uh, hardcore like art art type thing. Yeah, and this is where they like have to pick a door, right? And. But like the whole the art thing, quote unquote, is basically they're filming them killing these people. Yeah. It's like some hardcore. Yeah. But doesn't he picks the door? The main character picks the door where he should have been killed. Right. But he right. ends up surviving it. Yeah. And I didn't okay. understand what. Why? Why? I, yeah, I didn't. I didn't fully understand this one either. Um, super creepy, though, I might add. Because oh, it's just horrifying. because of like, yeah, because <laughs> because of the way it all kind of goes down is like, you know, they go and they volunteer for this art demonstration. They didn't know that's what was going to happen, that they were going to film them killing these people. And so they end up having to pick a door. If you pick the blue, I think I said, if you pick the blue door, you get to leave. If you pick the red door, they'll kill you and film it. Right. But yeah, I didn't understand what happened to the main character. Like, I don't know. This one is really short. It was super short. Yeah, it's it's one of the shorter ones, I think. And yeah, it it almost didn't have enough time to tell the story, I feel like. Although I just remember being creeped out though thinking about that like yeah, like I don't it sounded it almost sounded believable enough that anybody could kind of find themselves in a situation like that. Like it wasn't unbelievably like out there. No. Um, but moving on, because again, I don't want to ruin any of these stories more than if we have already. <laughs> uh, number seven is called the broadsword, and that is the name of the. Oh, this one's pretty good too. Yeah, I, I actually this one was probably the creepiest one to me. Like, yeah, maybe is... not the creepiest, but the one that I I found myself actually getting goosebumps every once in a while, <laughs> which is very uncommon for me. Yeah, so this one starts like these two guys are in the woods and somebody's like stalking them. And then like, what does he say? He's like, that's the last time I saw whatever Jim, Jim Jeffries, whatever his name is. Yeah, I think like, so. actually I, think I saw right. him two more times. Yep. Yep, that's right. Yep. And then I don't remember, like he's just like going about his daily life, but he like way later in life. And he keeps, like, hearing singing in the vents. And, like, some weird stuff is happening. Like, his girlfriend is like, who's that girl that left your apartment this morning? And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And he's like, yeah, yep. after you left, a girl left your apartment around whatever time. And he's like, huh, that's really weird. I don't know anybody. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, and this one ends up being, like, he, uh, basically, he there's, like, some weird entities, right? Like aliens basically that live in this same apartment building yeah and he basically ends up uh do they like take him away i think well the yeah end? they like capture him and they like torture him and then mm -hmm. they like infect him but i, I feel like that's not right. even the yeah. right way to put it they like make him 
they they like change him fundamentally. I can't even really think of how to put it. Yeah. And they basically turn him into one of them, and then I can't really remember how it ends. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> That's that was the part that stood out though to me. Yeah, as they basically turn him into one of them, but it's the parts leading up to it are what was like the super creepiest though. Like when he's oh, in his apartment, so yeah, so creepy. And he keeps like hearing voices through the vents, and they're like singing or like laughing or like saying one of them can hear us up there or something like that. I'm yeah. like, oh Jesus. <laughs> Super, super scary. So the next story, it's it's titled 30, but the way it's written out in this thing I'm looking at, and just so that I I mention this, it's it's written as like dash 30 dash. Okay. And it supposedly that means um the way a journalist signals that they're ending a story. So I, okay. there must be a meaning to the title of it. Interesting. <clears throat> um, and this is the one. I actually think this is probably my second favorite uh, story of them. This is the one where the two biologists are living out in the woods together. for like. Yeah, I got super Area X vibes from this. Yeah, exactly. In and a I really good way, because I yeah. love Area X. I'm, but this yeah. one, I don't really understand the ending <laughs> at all. Pretty confusing. Yeah, I did. She was she like a were fox or something? It, I didn't really get it. But what? She was a thing. Yeah, wasn't she? Isn't that who was in the freaking den with him? The coyotes at the end. Yeah, but wasn't it like a human in the hole with him? I thought it was her. Oh. I or see I guess I, I didn't confused? understand that because I thought she was like passed out. Well, she yeah, she threw acid in his face, but he knocked yeah. her out. Oh, and can we talk about his eye? It's disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, it is so gross. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. It talks it about it hard. like leaking and stuff. It's like, "Oh, ew. I can yeah. smell it. Ew." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the description of it was very, very graphic. Oh, it was man, it was it's impressive. horrifying. Mm -hmm. It's so good, though. Oh, oh so she was a were fox? Because I thought it had something I, to do with the cult that was there. I cannot say that with conviction. I just thought that because he's he was studying the coyotes, right? I, yeah. I said fox. I meant coyote. Um. He was studying these coyotes, but then that's where he ends up finding some weird stuff was going on, right? It was in the dens of the coyotes. Right. And I thought, I thought at the end the of cult. the story... Okay, you're probably right then. Yeah, no, you're probably right. I thought, though, he found himself in one of the dens, and there was like a human-coyote hybrid in the den with him. And I... that's where the story ends. I... See, I thought that was just like it changed perspective to a coyote. Because she attacks him, right? And uh -huh. then... Because he was getting poisoned the whole time by her, too, I guess. Yeah, she was poisoning his water, yep. I, so she attacks him, and I, I, thought, I thought he knocked her out. But then, like, while she's still knocked out and his eyes all fucked up and he's, like, on the ground, like, someone else is trying to get in, I thought. Oh, yeah, you're probably right. Okay. And I, I, I thought they, like, sense. they come in, and I can't remember, they, like, do something with her, and then he, like, just crawls away, and he crawls into the coyote den. I think you're right. Yeah. So I don't I don't understand why she was mad at him. Like I didn't I their whole relationship is weird to me. It doesn't really make sense cuz he like leaves and he well, like because never contacted her. Yeah, but it was like a long long time ago, remember? Like he yeah, was but... with her and then he took a job where he was just going to leave her basically. And he they were like you're going to be gone for a long time and he was like, "Oh yeah, no big deal." And just like left her out of the blue. Oh, so apparently okay. she so still hates sense. him for that. So she poisoned him for that? Uh, I'd probably have to listen to it again and get back to you on that. And <laughs> if I'm honest. Just, it, it felt like there were two different things that were happening at the same time. Right. And what was with the helicopter crash? I don't know. If I'm honest. I, I don't know. I didn't understand that part. Okay. Good. <laughs> I was like, because well, I, I was like listening and he's like, yeah came up on the helicopter and i was like wait a minute why is that what yeah I, I i don't know i didn't understand that 
there was a lot of this that was over my head in some of these stories. Yeah, I'm, I feel like I understood like seventy five percent of it. Sure, that's pretty good for a first pass. I think so. Uh, so moving on to the last story, this one called six six six. This one I didn't really and... understand. I'm honest. No, so this one's basically just about a guy and his wife, and he inherits his old family estate, right? And but yet his family was super into like cult stuff. Um, at least his dad was. His dad was, yeah. And yeah, like at the end, doesn't his isn't the guy's like dead dad there, like in the house by the end? They're doing like a seance or some shit. Like his sister's yeah. there and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But and isn't his isn't his dad there too? And his dad's yeah, like his dead? dad is there. That's okay. That's how the story ends, right? It's like and then whatever his name was walks through the door and that's yep. it's over. Right. Yeah, yeah no, that one's very that... short. Like you said, I think it is probably only about freaking. I half think it's hour. thirty minutes long. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, so uh, that is Occultation and Other Stories by Laird Barron. Yeah, if you're a fan of horror, check it out for sure. For sure, actually, yeah. Like like we said, I mean, this is a pretty visceral book. I mean, we, we've listened to a lot of books, and this one definitely hit a couple of responses from me that I've never had an audiobook hit for me. So. I don't think I've ever like listened to a book and out loud said "ew," like like <laughs> honestly disgusted. That's awesome. <laughs> that is great. Yeah, definitely highly recommended though, and I'm I'm actually uh, I'm glad you liked it too. Because at first I was like, <laughs> I was like, man, Bo ain't gonna like this one. <laughs> <laughs> the first story when I first started listening to it, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. This is like the first thirty minutes. I was like, this book freaking sucks. Same, oh same god. here. And then, and then I looked down at my phone and I was like, oh my god, I got twelve more hours of I, this. Me too. And I, especially because <laughs> I was so lost. I was like, what's happening? Yeah. And then, and then the next story came up, and I was like, oh okay, I get to start fresh. I'm, I'm not lost again. Right. I agree, actually. So yeah. Overall, though, definitely a. A pretty solid listen. Very dense, like we said. Probably worth at least two listens, I'm going to oh, say. Oh, yeah. All I want to do is go listen to it again. Um, And again, like we said, though, you're getting a ton of content here. I mean, 12 and a half hours isn't super long, but nine stories in wrapped up into that. That's, that's pretty good. So, yeah, um, it is. But yeah, so I think we can uh, wrap it up on the book there. Uh, what are we going to be doing next time, Bo? Mm, anime Squires. The finale? The finale. Okay. I think we do need to get that get that wrapped up. We've been leaving that one. <laughs> yeah, it's out. been like over a month since our last episode. <laughs> sure, yeah, one, one guy's probably out. like, what the hell? Yeah. I want to know how they like the ending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just building up the suspense. <laughs> um, we'll never finish it next... actually <laughs> just leave it. it it's just a dead series for us sorry yeah. um, <laughs> sorry. sorry guys and then I think, think the actual uh, next book we're going to be doing is Fingerprints of the Gods by Graham Hancock Yeah. so, so kind of two longer about... books back to back for anybody I guess who's listening yeah because that one is long it's like 18 hours so. Yeah. So if you want to like listen now and then come back to the next episode, probably start now. Yeah. Yeah, because by the time we get to it, you might still not be done if you only listen to you know yeah. get a short amount of time to listen to books. <laughs> and as our longtime fan, I'm sure knows, sometimes when we pick a really long book, it's like, man, it took us like a month to listen to freaking <laughs> Lord of the Rings, the first one. Right. Yeah. This and Fingerprints of the Gods could end up getting postponed. It might not be the the next actual book we end up doing just depends on our our schedules and stuff and if we're able to finish it so i think well i think we'll be fine i think so but yeah so with that if anybody has any questions come kotpl.pod at gmail.com yeah I, you broke up there for a minute ryan and i hope hopefully you said didn't say anything important but 
yeah. Oh, I just before I just uh, reiterated the email. Okay, we got the email part of it, I think. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, I'll catch the... you guys in the next one.